All right, so in this section, we are going to be working on finding inverses. Okay? There are four steps here to finding the inverse function. Okay? The first step is you're going to replace f of x with y, because really f of x, the function notation, means the y variable. So we're going to replace that in our function. So this f of x here becomes y equals 4x plus 2. Then what you do is you switch the position of x and y. So y becomes or goes where the x was and x goes where the y was. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to solve for your y in that function. It should not be solved for y already. You should have to actually do some work here. So, I'm going to subtract 2. That gives me x minus 2 equals 4y. Then I'm going to divide everything by 4. That gives me x minus 2 divided by, I'm running out of space here, divided by 4 is equal to y. And lastly, now that you've got that solved for y, now what you're going to do is you're going to replace y with the inverse notation. of x. Okay. And that then would be my inverse function. Inverses, just like multiplication and division, they cancel each other out. Okay. Addition, inverse of addition is subtraction. Inverse of square rooting is squaring. Now we're finding those inverse functions that are going to cancel each other out. We're going to get more into that tomorrow when we do it. But right now, we just got to learn how to do it. Okay? So, again, the inverse of f of x is written as f to the negative 1 power of x. We say it as the inverse of f. So, which of these is the inverse of f of x equals 3x to the fifth minus 2? Well, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take f of x and I'm going to replace it with y. So we get y equals 3x to the fifth power minus 2. Then I'm going to switch my x and y. So that becomes x equals 3y to the fifth minus 2. I am just switching the x and the y. Everything else stays in the same spot. Just those two variables switch out. Now I've got to solve that for y. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Divide both sides by 3. Oops, don't like that. And now to get rid of that, that fifth power, I'm going to take both sides to the fifth root. So the inverse here of f is going to be the fifth root of x plus 2 divided by 3. 
So that to me looks like this one right there. So let's find the inverse of this function. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace g of x with y. Then switch the x and the y. x is now going to equal the cube root of y minus 1. And now I've got to solve for y. In this particular case, y is stuck inside of a radical, so I'm going to cube both sides. So that gives me x cubed equals y minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. x cubed plus 1 is y. So my inverse here now, now I'm going to write g, the inverse of g, as x cubed plus 1. Try this one here now. Again, I'm going to change p of x into y. Switch my x and my y. And now solve for y. Divide both sides by 3. Take the fourth root of both sides. Subtract 1. They might look funky, but when it's all said and done, the inverse of P is equal to the fourth root of x over 3, and then minus 1.